Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Thursday, and welcome back to another Stock Twits Q&A session. I'm Brittany Umar here with Scott Red Dog Redler. We're going to answer your questions live. Of course, stocks did end their winning streak today, so Scott, what did you make of the action? What did I make of the action? It seems like it's the same action that we try and like put uh, categories around or create stories around or try and figure out something different. And all in all, you know, today was a down day. So right now, all of the, the, the top pickers come out and say, you know what, we're overbought, this is it, get in cash, get out of your stocks, get short. And then you have the bulls who say, ah, you know, just a day in the life, we've come a long way, let's figure out what happens. And to me, you know, being on the floor and, and trading, it's, you know, it, it's a little frustrating because the dynamic that we're used to where stocks end on the highs of the day or stocks end on the, on the lows of the day, strong stocks finish strong, weak stocks go weak, you know, it isn't happening as much because of the lack of volume. So if you want to take a quick look at the chart of you know, the SPX here, or I'm not exactly sure what I have up here, yeah, the SPX, and you want to look at where we are on a macro basis, you know, we're, we're absolutely in this exact same trend we've been in since you know, November. You know, November has a really nice macro trend intact you had your first gut check or real 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 gut check right here when we came into it in uh, in april and held a 50 day then came up went sideways held higher and then broke above this prior pivot here at 1597 to give you a nice multi-day week or multi-day move and then lo and behold today what do we have we have a, a little bitty red candle that's all we have for Active traders, if you're trying to be long, a lot of positions today could have hurt you if you had some longs go against you. For cute guys trying to be short, maybe you said, okay, this is the first red day we've had in five. Maybe it leads to another to retest the eight day moving average, which we've done a few different times along the way. So at this point, you know, I cleaned up a few of my longs. I tried to make some money short. It wasn't a blockbuster type situation. You know, tomorrow is Friday. All in all, depending on your time frame, this trend has been really strong. You could continue. Look how far back this goes now. It goes back all the way to the Red Dog reversal back here on October 4th, and that was in 2011. You know, you want to draw this trend line? Look at this one. So, all in all, trends are strong. Short term, every time we you have a little bit of a top, everyone's like, what's next? And at this point, you know, does it, does it pay to be a little less risky up here? Yes. Does it pay to go all in short? Anyone who's tried to do that so far has not been rewarded. Well, Scott D here is speculating about the S&P and wondering if the S&P will have a 5% correction at any point this calendar year. But he asked, <laughs> At any point this year? Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> that, that's a great question. I know. I'd love to know that too. But he says, um, has QE invalidated the technical overbought signals that are out there? You know, in a way, because there, there's a, a force at will that keeps buying the market. So every time you get this massive reading of overbought, you know, some of the same rules don't apply. So, you know, we came in today um, with, you know, the oscillator somewhere around, I think, plus 50 and plus 70 is considered tremendously overbought. Plus 50 is overbought. And after five days in a row, um, of to the upside after uh, a multi-week, multi-month move, you would think, why not get a little bit of softness? But when you have 85 billion in uh, securities to buy, whether it's the long end of the, the curve or people say it's the S&P 500, whatever it is, and then you have you know companies buying back their own stock and a lack of supply um, out there, you know, and everyone's looking to get some kind of yield, these pullbacks have been shallow. But if all of a sudden, you know, things give way and sentiment changes, you know, it could happen quick. So everyone's saying, I don't want to be caught holding the bag. So when you get a pull in like we saw today, some think that, um, it, that that's it. But every time everyone's thought that's it, you know, it hasn't amounted to much. And if you take a look real quickly here, again at the chart, you know, let's go to the five minute chart real quickly on the, on the SPX because, you know, you would have thought that this was a pretty dramatic move, right? Here was, you know, the, 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 the yesterday's high. Okay, so this was a little bit of your red dog reversal where it squeezed through the prior day high and that was 1632, made a top here at 1634. This is where you had a, a, a really nice, what was this, a 30 minute breakdown, it felt like a crash, that's what you have these days, from 1633 down to 16, you know, 23, 10 handles. That was a pretty big decline. Okay, so when you get a potent decline like that, typically, you know, you want to have it contained in the bottom third or, or at least half. And the half came 
probably right around here-ish. So it did bounce back, get contained, and then we wound up closing a little bit off the lows. So I think at this point for a, the corrective activity to continue, we probably shouldn't get back above this 1630. And then, you know, you go back to the daily, you know, you want to see an upper level break, and then there's your 1614, and then here's your 21 day at 1593, which also coordinates. Every time we just say we've broken above a prior area, we've almost retested it. Here's your 1474, which uh, actually, no, here's your 1474, which was a September high. You know, broke above it here in January, had a move, came back, held above it. Then 1530 was a new pivot, okay, broke above it, um, went as high as 1560, came back, almost tested it. So we've almost tested every level we broke out above. So, you know, the question is if you want to do a little revision to the mean trade, when that short term top comes in, chances are is, you know, do we hold a little bit above the prior pivot, which is right here, which would probably also be the 21 day. And if you're looking for a cute short, that's about all we've been getting so far if the trend's gonna continue in 2013. Well, I have your friend Ben C. Banks here. Oh, I like Ben. I know, that's why but I call him you know, your friend. you know he's only 17? I know, I know. It's very cool, very cool. He participates a lot. He's, he writes in every week. Um, but he asks, to what degree do the indexes affect your willingness to take trades? He says, for example, as we extend in the spiders, but there are still setups, do you take them? Yes, because you can, because there's so much individual stock movement that sometimes it doesn't matter really what the S&P is doing. If all of a sudden you do get a pullback in the S&P and then your stock doesn't pull back, then you continue to stay long the setup. And as long as the reason why you're in the setup doesn't change, you stay in it. You know, everyone knows today GMCR and, and, and Telsa were the short squeeze du jour is based on, you know, on earnings. So it, it didn't matter that much when the futures pulled in, except for when the futures pull in and your stock doesn't pull in, it gives you more conviction that you could buy it. So you see that relative strength diversion. You know, granted, when you're overbought and you're plus 48 on the oscillator and, you know, you think that we are ready for some type of pull-in, it makes you a little less, um, you know, just say um, trigger happy or a little, just gives you a little less conviction to be seven, eight, nine, ten 10 longs, even though there's a good setup because it's like, okay, I'm going after this laggard trade now, even though it's good when we're overbought. Or I'm trying to play a breakout and I think that the market's going to correct, so a breakout shouldn't work. So there's all these divergences in your head and there's been divergences all year, which has been keeping good traders out of good trades. So the moral of the story is, is be in the good trade, but if you're not feeling super comfy about it, just do it with less size and stay involved. And I've been saying this for a while, it's not an all in, all out environment. It's a participate. Create some cash flow, make money, know your time frame. All right, ready to dive into some stocks? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. We have one I'm ready fun. to dive into <laughs> Thursday happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, before you do that, we have some names to get to. Let's answer JL here who says Tesla after today's strong move, now what? Now what? Everyone just wants to short it and make the free money. Here you go, look at, look at Tesla, okay? Um, here you are, you have uh, a huge doji, and for this particular point, it's gonna need time. You now have two points of reference, that's all you have here. You have a high at 75.77, you have your low, okay? It's been an unbelievable type move. Typically this is your exhaustion type day, and now it's just gonna be a bit choppy. Shorter term, I think some guys in, my, in the virtual trade floor made some money because you look at the, the three minute chart and this is what you had here, okay? You had um, you know, this, this king and queens type formation. Like This is what people want in the market. They want some kind of outside day, which is what you saw right here, it broke above a prior high, you know, gave you a red candle, then gave you a little bit of follow through to that outside type of environment or the green red bar king and queens formation with a little bit of follow through. So this little, if this was a daily chart, this would have been your day to take notice on an intraday. Okay, and then you would have had some follow through and then you would have seen some commitment prior days. You know, so just say, if you want to do like a bear flag, here is your you know, three bar you know, pullback and then there was no demand for it and then you have somewhat of a wedge formation here where then is your downside follow through. So from three o'clock to, to almost you know, four, this turned into a really nice short, you know, granted everyone probably across the board got squeezed this entire way. So, you know, this was the first time, you know, you saw a real short setup intraday and then there you have it. So moving forward on the macro, you go back to this huge range expanding type move. Now I could, the question is, you know, how long will it stay above, you know, this low and hold this gap? And 
you know, at this point, I think, I think it's just going to be very noisy. And, you know, there are micro trades along the way. And, you know, noisy is $10 range here. And there's a lot of money to be made from, you know, from day traders, so to speak. But in order to have a macro move, I think it's going to take a lot of time to absorb what just you know, took place here in this exhaustion type doji gap. Well, you know I love my Keurig machines <laughs> and my K-Cups, so let's answer one about Green Mountain Coffee. We know Green Mountain just expanded its partnership with Starbucks, which is pretty exciting, too. By the way, do you, have, do you have a favorite flavor? Favorite flavor? Yes. Um, I traditionally buy the, uh, there's a caramel vanilla cream, something oh, yeah, like that. Fancy. Yeah, yeah, I try to I get a little I just go with the Dunkin' Donuts, I go with the little Dunkin'. Oh, no, I definitely do the flavors. <laughs> I take a, a little coffee with my cream, personally, but... Ah. Um, <laughs> There you go. What are your thoughts on Green Mountain? Well, let's see. This one also had a huge gap up, but this one, look at this. This one was a lot different. This one, the buyer stayed in control the entire day. So you had a huge gap up, closed near the highs of the day. So they didn't even let any of the shorts out. So typically this type of move, even though it's come after <laughs> a big move after being left for dead. You know, by the way, this is an island reversal. Okay, look at this gap down. All these people are trapped here. Gap up. And we talk about gaps and just to talk about strategies, this gap that never even came close to getting filled ignited what was a really nice move after, you know, you know, a, a huge decline. You know, this was a, a, this was a favorite stock for so long before the trend broke. And then when you look for some reason to get back involved in a, in a situation, you look for gaps. And here was your, you know, your island leftover gap here. Gap down, gap up, all these people are trapped whether they're, you know, there were longs looking to go higher or, or shorts down or whatever it was, this is what ignited the move. So fast forward to what happened today, big gap up and just closed near the highs. So at this point, yes, do you, do you, do you look to initiate a long up here? No, but you know, if you get some kind of bullish flag here and it takes out today's high in the next few sessions, you could get some kind of continuation. You go to your quick intraday chart to see how you could have handled it. You know, here was the, the, the gap up it wound up, you know, consolidating. So here on, uh, actually, let's go to, no, where, let's go to the three minute chart of today. Um, actually, is this, yeah, oops, sorry, I'm like drawing all these things here for you. Let's go to the five minute or three minute. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> What's it going to be, Scott? What's it going to be? It'll be the three minute or five minute. Okay. So here, you know, here is your gap up. This was, I guess, you know, the, whatever, the prior day mark from after hours earnings. So this was your, you know, your trigger buy if you're looking for a day trade. Then it continued higher, and then it never really gave you that engulfing move to, to, to get out of it. You know, from here, it sort of trended higher. Um, and it, it, it was really <laughs> shorts. Un unfortunately, you definitely got your clock clean today, and you didn't get away out like you had in Telsa. Now, closing the highs, and if you're still short, you, you definitely you know, are not going to happy hour or very happy. <laughs> you're going there to, to drown out your blues. <laughs> but with that said, this is your pivot. Today's high tomorrow, and we'll see what happens from there. All right. Trader RL here is uh, bringing up Netflix, announcing a deal with Disney today. Wants to know your thoughts on this chart. Well, Netflix is, you know, is, is a situation that gapped up and didn't have follow through like the prior quarter. For me, I've been waiting to see what type of resolution we'll have to this two-week range since the gap up. So on the price point sheet, we had, I think, 210.40 as, an, as a potential pivot buy. So with that said, you know, I was sitting on my desk, scratching my head like this. No, I just have an itch right now. <laughs> and uh, I heard the news about Disney. And, I, oh, Disney exclusive deal, blah, blah, blah. You know, I wasn't sure, you know, what to make of it. I was like, let me see the price action. Let me see if it could be sustained. So once it went through 210 change on the virtual trade floor, I bought some Netflix. It actually helped out my day. And then I wanted to see it hold above it. So you look at the macro chart in Netflix and you'll see that, again, we talked about how much of, uh, gaps could remain unfilled. So this gap here on earnings showed a lot of demand and then look how it triggered above the prior day high and then you had an additional move. From there, you had a bull flag, boom, and then you know, it took time to consolidate. So this quarter's earnings, you had a big gap up, but there was really no follow through. At first, you had this minor range here, okay, that it seemed as if uh, tactically you could make money short if it were to break below. It broke below, but then you know closed strong. So it, it didn't give you that much inclination that it could continue lower. So P.S. The reason why I had um, this on our price point sheet today was I said a move above. There it is, two ten forty. I remember numbers. I don't know why it could pop back up into this bigger range, and that's what happened on this news. Pop back up. 
even with the news later in the day with Google and YouTube and whatnot, whatever came out, it still didn't get crushed. So now at this point, if it were to hold just say, uh, you know, 215-ish and hold the top end of this bar, the next trade you could get here is a trade through today's high, maybe 219, for a 52-week high trade. At this point, this chart's telling me not to be short. You had, the shorts had their chance. It could have fallen apart right here when it broke below and you know, you, you couldn't find, you know, it, it came right off the lows and closed pretty strong. So with that said, it was a nice buy above this 210. If you're still in it, I think it's worthy of a, of a tier one or a feeler. For me, I would be a buyer above today's high in the coming future and that stands around 219 and you'd want to see some type of volume. Today, you put basic studies in, you look at what type of volume we had today and I'm sure there was a little bit more volume than we've seen in the space and look at that, a little bit more volume, that's why the, the move was a bit cleaner today. Gotcha. All right, Axis here saying what are your thoughts on Valero, short, short term and long term setups? VLO, let's take a look. Um, you look at the chart here and this group has really been a laggard group this entire year. Okay, you take a look. Um, you know, I haven't traded this in a while. I know I tried the refiners here and there. You look at every time it's tried to break through this downtrend, it's failed. You know, broke above, failed, came here, failed, I was above it, failed. So it did hold the 200 day moving average and bounced off it. Um, to me, this still seems like a laggard trade, pretty, pretty broken. Um, no real reason to be in it. If for, the, for one, you know, for at some point, it, it, if it takes out this downtrend and, and closes above it and doesn't fail, maybe that'll tell you something changed. If it takes back the 50 day, it'll tell you something. If you want to be long small versus 200 day, okay. But overall, I don't see any reason why if you have real estate on your screen that this takes up a big majority of it until something changes. All right. Uh, how about Japan and Japanese stocks? This is coming from Trader RL also. He notes that Toyota Motors and Sony have been ripping higher this year. And he's definitely right. Sony just posted yes. its first annual profit, five years. Well, I'm, I'm, it's not new to me. Okay, <laughs> 2013 thesis. Go read it. We posted it in December. I'm not going to be you know, a gorilla because I'm the red dog pounding on my chest. But we talked about Japan the last two years on how the opportunities of having a huge you know, almost two decade base could promote, you know, promote, promote, promote. Pr provide. You got it. Something like that. <laughs> Upside. So with that said, attention should have been on the EWJ in Japan. And within there, I'm like, okay, if Japan's going to go, well, it looks good. And at the time, Toyota looked good and it still looks good. And then, you know, as uh, Japan got a little bit more attention, people were like, what else comes out of there? And then Sony started doing better. So anyway, you look at the EWJ and uh, you see that it's had a, quite a move. Um, you look at the reason why I really like this coming into 2013, look at this channel here, you know, looking as if, you know, it was going to finally break out above and what did it do? It broke out above 950 and now look where you are above the eight day traveling along this path really nicely. Um, some people have been playing this by buying the YCS. YCS has had an unbelievable, you know, move just broke out again. This is the short yen. This is uh, however you say his name, Abenomics you know, the devaluating the yen, and this uh, has given you a really nice trade, um, trending higher, and uh, look at this breakout today. So with that said, that's been a way to play Japan. Um, Toyota also, you know, has had a really nice move to start. Um, I, I was looking at this type of, of uh, flag type pattern at the highs, above 95 to get to about 110. It happened, it went higher. You know, these things are just, it's getting just like a lot of things in the market, hard to, to chase. Doesn't mean they're shorts, but you know, when you're extended this high, you know, you could stay involved and trail it. But you know, I would say at this point, you know, Toyota has not been below the, the 21 day moving average since April. So as long as it stays above it, stay with it. As far as Sony, um, I've looked at it many times. I, I've definitely uh, missed the boat here myself, but um, you know, cause look how spotty it is. A lot of this happens overnight. You had a pullback, you know, and then it made new highs and, and now it looks like it's ready to go again. Let's just take a quick look at the weekly chart. Overall on the weekly chart, it's a little bit easier to see. Looks as if, um, you know, breaking above another area here and it seems as if Sony should, you know, it's at 18. No reason why the trend continues. You can't see on a macro level 22 and change at some point this year. All right, keep the questions coming guys. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back.
I'm Evan Lazarus, Chief Knowledge Officer for T3Live.com. You don't become a great trader by watching videos and taking courses. You become a great trader through live screen time. Accelerate that learning curve by tapping into the experience of seasoned professionals. Currently, we're offering five-day free trials to each of our four mentoring rooms. In the mentoring rooms, we teach our strategies in the context of the live market. To sign up for a free trial, go to the T3Live education page, fill out the form, and get started when the next trading session begins. We hope to see you in one of our mentoring rooms. We're back and answering your questions live. Let's oh. answer one from JJ, who's asking <laughs> about Dell. And he's asking if you see any value in a possible higher buyout by July. You know, for, uh, for a while, I thought that potentially a higher bid could come in. But at this point, it feels as if you know, the whole conversation is getting stale. You know, I think they'd be almost lucky to take 1360. It was below nine. Can they come in and, and get 14, 14 and a half? Maybe, but is it worth the risk? I don't think so. You look at the chart of Dell, and you will see that um, you know here is was the low in 2009. Let's just go to the daily chart real quickly. You'll see it had a it had a had a move as if you know the you know it, as if it was taken over already. You know way back when. Here is the low here. You know this was uh, I think where a lot of us were trading it pretty actively when it broke above 11. Did get as high as 14 and change. It is a 1330. So. Maybe, you know, I don't think the deal falls apart, so your risk is in that high right here, and I'm just speculating. But um, if, you, if you are a huge fan and you think that they're gonna come in higher and that there's unlocked value here, which I don't really think there's that much, I think really your maximum upside is 14 and a half, and in this market, you know, I think there's other opportunities that can get you that type of move that you don't need to sit in Dell and wait. You know, um, especially considering the move that it had, and the, the you know, it's not like they have a huge dividend. It's not like they have a huge growing business, or they're very innovative. It's just a commodity business where I think there's a lot of people doing better things out there. So I think they should just take their money and run. All right. Well, what do you say we talk Facebook? Facebook. CF Trader saying thoughts uh, on an entry here in Facebook. Any setups on your radar? Facebook. <laughs> I'm like thinking of my, all my Redifors <laughs> as a friend in me. I They'll just come it, to you. Like you can just it. talk. It'll come right. to you. <laughs> this thing has been so hit and miss and so um, wishy-washy, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, just like my friends on there. As you get older, you lose some of your friends. Oh, um, <laughs> friend red dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I could use some friends. <laughs> I'm going to get a dog soon. Chase turns five, so then I'll get a real friend. <laughs> but anyway, with that said, y you know, Facebook has two different patterns here. Okay, if you want to look at Facebook, um, in my 2013 thesis, we talked about Facebook, and really it was right here, okay? And this was the potential of this cup and handle pattern that, you know, you never really know how long it's going to take to materialize. So in the thesis, we talked about how you had your cup and handle, and, you know, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to get to, I think this was the target, 31 to 33. So the question, like almost the problem that a lot of people have in the market is what happens when you're when your targets get met well before the end of the year. Do you raise them or do you sell? So if you look what happened with Facebook, look at that. Boom, into two quarters ago earnings or into that big event that they had. So at that point, I had a really nice trade and I sold the majority of it. Okay, but then what did I do? I tried to buy it back, buy it back, and it turned into a little bit of a choppy mess. And then here we are now. Okay, so with that said, you, know, you want to look at the macro pattern and you still have you know, this descending channel here you still have you know, massive support here at 25, and it's somewhat in no man's land. So if you wanted to be long sum and, and not look at it and kind of be like a far off friend, like probably you could be friends from high school and college that you are fake too, especially if you're a girl. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I like girls are fake to their friends. The guys, you know, you keep in touch, you go watch games and, you know, anyway. Keep it real. Keep it real. So as far as, so if you want to be like a, a far off friend, you know, maybe you buy a little bit. If you want to be like, tight and go to like Nick games and hope they win the, the playoffs and this and that and you look at the <laughs> look at the nuts so anyway all right whatever here you go this was what shouldn't have happened here this was you know your your earnings it gapped above it looked good it stayed about 28 and then boom took that back right there that could have been your stop and said okay Facebook has not changed it's the same old you know person from high school used to talk behind my back and and not say nice things <laughs> That never happened to you in high school, did it? Never. Never. Everyone was your best friend. Everyone always said nice things. No one was jealous of how pretty you are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you go anyway. back to Facebook. It's been a long week. Uh, here's your 28. Came back below it. So yesterday, Red Dog said, let me give it a little try. Because from 29 and change down to below the prior day low, which is what? Uh, 26.85. That was my entry. 
today, you know, some big honchos were talking about it on uh, TV and it got a little bit of a bid. You know, some people probably added above 2730. If you did so, you're probably a little frustrated also. But anyway, it's still above it. It's choppy. This is my stop. Short term, as long as it stays above here, I will stay in it. Longer term, you know, I, I, it still has not changed where you want to be in it for a macro move and it's probably going to need a few more quarters to prove that mobile has growth and it's just not an accounting trick. Yes, and speaking of mobile, their whole mobile push, did you hear about their, uh, their agreement with Nokia on their new $99 smartphone? I heard it's a horrendous phone. No, I, no, no, I don't know anything really about the phone itself because they just unveiled it today. Oh, but they did? Yeah. Nokia? Yeah, Nokia Asha 501. It's going to be in emerging markets in June, uh, I think 90 countries by mm. June. But there's an agreement with Facebook on the phone that users can access Facebook without incurring data charges. Hmm, let's take a look at Nokia real quick, just as we're talking about it. Because I know Nokia, some people were talking about it. This is, you know, an, an old dog that perked up like a few old dogs out there. Um, so, you know, hey, maybe it's something, okay? You know, a lot of these old school names are coming up and maybe people get excited about it. As far as Nokia, you know, it went as high as five bucks, pulled in this chart right here. You now above 361, perhaps it goes a little bit higher. Um, but as far as what effect it's gonna have on Facebook, it's at this point, I feel like it's a lot of perception mm -hmm. on Facebook. It's supply demand perception because the investment bankers are the ones who screwed up the fundamental play by having five rounds of private investors go up in valuation where by the time the deal came public, you know, it was already way too valued in the trees. So every analyst could always have something to say. So at this point, I think it needs time. All right, we'll give it some time. We'll move on to a name I don't think you and I have ever discussed before. No. Uh, Stock One Traders asking what a good entry point on stock symbol LL, Lumber Liquidators. He says, am I too late since it, it's at an all-time high? Lumber Liquidators. Mm -hmm. um, you look here and now let me look at the chart. I can look at any chart. It does seem like you're a little late, but I feel like a lot of people think they're a little late on a lot of things. Here is your gap up. You know, I don't know what was here. This could have been earnings. Gapped up, continued, pulled back to the eight day. Now it's at highs. You know, I, I always say if you're extended from the eight day and the 21 day, it's always hard to enter unless you're looking for some kind of momentum cash flow trade. If you're looking for a core trade, you know, it hit the 50 day here, here. So it's, it's been basically twice in 2013. So I, I, I wouldn't chase this. I don't know a lot about it, but overall, it's, it, if you're in it long, it, healthy looks good. You know, I think lumber was, um, was limit down today for some reason, um, but this doesn't look like it was affected. I, I would wait here. All right, Campbell's Soup, are you a fan? Uh, Campbell's Soup, is that uh, Shannon Sharp's mom was the, the spokesmodel cannon? <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> uh, I, just know, I was just asking about the soup itself. Are you uh, a fan? Yeah, you know, I like it, it maybe a tomato-based soup, creamy soup, and too many too many fats. And they I have, have that. They stomach. they have a tomato-based soup yes, at, over at Campbell. <laughs> well, they have that too. And LP saying uh, Campbell soup here traded in a tight range for over two months. Do you think above 47 is a good entry? Let's look at the chart. Um, here you go, Campbell soup looked like today. You know, it kind of engulfed a little bit of this range where it's rejecting higher prices. But it is at 21 day, um, and which it hasn't been, you know, for the majority of this year. So that's something a little different. When you see something a little different, you know, you just take a little, a little caution. You know, here is where you had a nice clean breakout above 42. You know, I guess if you're looking for that at this point, if you're looking for a breakout trade, don't be in it. Okay, if you've been holding it during the course of what's been a really nice move, and you're in a heavy position. You know, this is something a bit different here. I would loosen up a little bit because this could look like it's prone to some type of failure. Um, Has not been at the 50 day since the start of the year? So I would just say, be careful here. You know, and you know, I would, if you're not in it, just wait for a breakout type move at this point. You know, this is something that, or one of those small data take notices where sometimes it doesn't lead to anything, but you know, it engulfed this, this range. Like look what happened here did nothing. At this point, I would just, if you were in a lot of it, lighten up. And if you're playing for a breakout, I would wait till it gets above, you know, 4680 if that's what you're looking for. I expected some uh, soup retifors in that <laughs> one. I don't really have a lot of soup. You know, a lot of extra <laughs> fats and carbs and no need for that. I, I would have thought you'd sneak in some, some metaphors, though, in that one. We didn't get any. My bad. All right. Well, maybe you'll have some. For the coal sector, we have uh, one from RL here saying, thoughts on the coal sector. Uh, Walter Energy, trash for treasure. WLT. Treasures for trash. Uh, looks like it. You know, looks like some of these things perked up. Overall, 
Look at the size of this downtrend. It's been battered and bruised, and you've had coal in your stockings. There, <laughs> there you go. go. I knew you had one in you. somewhere from anything. <laughs> and if, even if you're Jewish, you're getting coal in your stockings. You know, no dreidels for you. Here, at this point, you know, look at this. You had a wide range bar, your first one, beauty, okay, above it. So this is your day that it woke up today, no follow through, but it did hold a little bit higher. I think you want to be long, be along a little bit versus yesterday's low, yesterday's low, where today's low is about 1833. And if you're looking for some type of follow through, you know, I would wait till it gets above this 1966. Overall, very, you know, very big downtrend and not a lot to like here, but overall, you know, small, small whisper that this little piece of trash could turn into a treasure for you. Maybe it gets a 22. All right, LP here saying uh, he'd like your thoughts on the airline space, specifically LCC, U.S. Airways. LCC. Could it take off? Ah, there Got you go. one. <laughs> <laughs> LCC, let's take a look. Okay, uh, it looks like it has a, had a big move, and if you look at this and you know me pretty well, you know that this is somewhat of a red dog reversal, short-term micro sell signal. Okay, here you go after a big move and take even a, a further look back. Stock has had an unbelievable move, and then you have a topping tail. What does a topping tail mean? Let's 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 in, what's that introspect or reflect or think? Sure, think, let's yeah, let's take let's, a, let's, a little time out here and I'm talk think, about topping tails. Okay, topping tails. What does a topping tail mean? A topping tail means that a stock tried to break out and didn't have enough power. In the past, if a stock's very strong, it breaks out, it goes, it squeezes shorts, everyone gets in, it, it breaks out, you, you high five the person on your desk and you say, nice breakout. And then, but when you get a topping tail, that means it broke out, people got excited and high fived, maybe a little <laughs> too early, and then it failed. And if you were short, you probably got squeezed. So what a topping tail sometimes does is it causes a little bit of a pullback. So you go back to this chart and you will see here it broke out above the 1755 high. People who thought it would break out and go bought it, but it didn't, it closed back below it. Some people said, I'm gonna short versus pivot. Once it gets through, I, I can't hold this short anymore. You know, I've been rolling it up, breaking every rule, blah, blah, blah. So with that said, small micro sell signal. So we'll see what happens if it could pull back even to the 8 to 21 of the 50. It's held the 50 day twice in April. At this point, you know, it's one of those days to take notice, but lately days to take notice in this strong tape haven't led to much. Very true. How's your hand? Was that a little too hard? No, so oh. please, I'm, I'm strong. I can handle it. Um, and we've talked on Morning Call about the action in the Chinese names, and we've got one on Baidu right here from War Warm Trade Winds saying, Hey Scott, can I stay long on Baidu? Please give us your expert chart read on exits and entry points. Well, you know, Baidu, we've talked about these Chinese names and with the Chinese market so weak and all the accounting problems and this and that. It, it's been out of favor, but it's also been technically weaker. But lately, you had a day one. So with laggard type trades, if you look for a day one on some volume, it can give you inclination that you can get maybe day two or day three. For me, I am not a buyer into day four. I don't care if it goes day five, six, or seven. It's just not in my process. You look at Baidu, Baidu held a really big lower level here, right? This was a lower level in Baidu. Here is your first engulfing day where it engulfed this little range, you know, took back these moving averages, put it on the radar. Okay, and then the next day traded above the high, next day traded above the high, and then today took out even a bigger level on its way to the 200 day. So overall from 85 to 95, I would say that's the easy bounce, or I'm sure it's not that easy if you tried to do it because nothing's easy in this market these days, but you know, here it is. For, in order for it to continue higher, I would say if you want to stay with it, you know, give it, you know let, it, let it build a little bit of a pattern here above today's low, and then at some point, maybe a flag gets above 95, and then you have this gap to contend with, okay? And then you have the 200 days. So there is some room here, but I would say the meat and potatoes of this move is already in the bag. So hopefully you, you saw this day one and participated with the few days thereafter. And some people have been trading it for cash and it looks okay. You know, you go to something just real quickly, I'll cover Sina because something that I'm in. Um, you know, sometimes these things just don't go at our time frame. okay? You had a big gap up in Sina. Um, that got kind of sold, but it didn't get like sold and then the gap fell apart. It got sold because look at the size of the gap up from here all the way up there. Be nice to one day actually be long something like that into a surprise announcement. It just doesn't happen. I'm, I'm the grinder workhorse and I get no free lunches. Anyway, you should have a shake for lunch. Do you have a big lunch or you have a big breakfast? 
Um, I had a salad. Okay. Does that count as big? Balsamic <laughs> dressing or creamy? Um, usually I do oil and vinegar. Oh, there you go. See? Healthy. Now everybody knows what I have A lot of people by accident, <laughs> you know, they have a salad, they think they're being all healthy, and then it's a Caesar salad with croutons and all this extra stuff, and you might as well have a hamburger and fries. Anyway, back to the chart of Sina. <laughs> and uh, here's your gap up <laughs> where it came back in, and then it held the majority of it, and then since then it's been a choppy mess. At some point, perhaps, it takes out this resistance and squeezes some shorts and continues. But there's a lot of speculation around this company that out of all their users, only 10% are real, blah, blah, blah. So at this point, I'm going to be light. And hopefully this type of move happens intraday where we get something clean. As of right now, it still looks okay. Just have less and let's hope it happens intraday because there's always some kind of overnight risk with this type of stock. Sohu, very nice move, very clean. You know, even today held the majority of it and, you know, it's showing you that some of these stocks could get back in vogue and give you some breakout trades. And as of now, this one has been best in breed. And let's see if some others play catch up. All right. Coca-Cola. PNR says, uh, what are your thoughts on Coca-Cola? Formed bull flag, but breakout not in. Not yet. It goes in you know, theory with these 2013 breakout trades. You know, you've had nice moves. And then the question is, can you get that trade for cash flow or can you get that trade? for an extra tier of an already existing investment. And Coca-Cola has been an unbelievable investment for those of you for the past few years, last few months. And you look at the chart here and you will see that, you know, the question is, can you get another one? You know, will this Coke be it? So with that said, you have the eight day, <laughs> the 21 day, it's not ready to break above here yet. So if you're trading it for a breakout above this price point, the price point is 42.71. So right now it seems like it needs more time. Here was your last healthy breakout. It's been consolidating. Overall, this stock has been something that's been a wealth builder. I know Warren Buffett loves it. You look at the monthly chart, you know, something to love showing you that, you know, you could have some quality names and, and build wealth besides looking for, you know, cute trading intermediate cash flow. Trader RL here saying, uh, what are your thoughts on the material sector, BHP and Rio? Look like they're trying to bottom. Let's take a look. Materials had a decent bounce. We'll go BHP first, BHP. Um, laggard play, laggard plays are tough, you know, off the low. It's had a, you know, a pretty choppy move where here's your last gap. Um, you know, if you want to be in a laggard trade, you got to make sure that, you know, that the interest stays there. And here is a gap you had back uh, about a week ago, which held and continued. Now you want to see commitment higher. So I would say as long as it holds above just say 69-ish, maybe there's potential that it could take out this bigger level and see a gap fill to 72. I think it's, it's spotty though. You have to be careful. What was the other one with BHP? Rio. Rio, R-I-O. Let's see if it looks similar. This one, um, not as much power, uh, really not that many signs of anything different. Here was your gap up here. Um, it did hold it. Uh, today it traded off, um, still in this lower monotonous, not great range so just be a little bit careful i know i, I went with the clf yesterday um and it you know it gave us a nice trade um and it actually gave you a way out today too and a way to make a little bit more money here was your you know our trade that we were looking at above this uh you know 2180 22 ish area I took some home you know while the while the market was a little weak it looked as if it was going to hold this upper end sorry and um then it gave you a trade through yesterday's high of 2322 it topped off at 23.50, which actually was something we tweeted about saying, you know, when we bought it, that it could probably get to at least 23.50 and it did get there. So now the question is, you know, is there more? So I'm still long a little bit. I'd say a few inside days, maybe it takes out this level. And at some point, if this rally is going to continue and they go after these lagger trades, there's no reason why you can't see 28 or some of these are making it all the way up to their 200 day. But at this point, you know, have one foot in the door, one foot out the door. All right. Is your foot going to be in the door in Alexian Pharmaceuticals? ALXN, -A that's coming from LP Longo, wants to know about an entry point. This one, I was in it today for a, a decent amount of time. And then just when the market pulled in, I'm like, let me just clean up some loose things. And I was trying to treat it as a trade. We've tried it a few times. The pharmaceutical and the bios have been very strong. You look here, there is a decent macro pattern. Okay. And it didn't have enough juice to break above it today. Um, here is that real resistance around 100, 101. There was a trade when it broke above 98, you know, and then hit that resistance. At this point, I, I think it's acting okay. Um, just remember that these, these type of names have a lot of uh, news risk because there's a lot going on with the FDA, with certain data points, and 
this was uh, this acted strong. It's above the moving averages. I would say watch this one. If you if you know a lot about it, you know here is your big wide range bar. It, it has held the top half, showing commitment up here. That at some point, if it were to break above 100, you get yourself a nice move. I know stock like REGN, which we focused on. You know, look at what happened here when this broke out. I'm not trying to like say one thing has anything to do with the other, but there's been some nice trades. This one was a nice one. Now this one's flagging, still not ready yet. You know, you did see a little corrective activity in stocks like in Amgen, um, which I think for this group you want to watch and you want to see. You know, can this hold this area, or will they try and go after a quality name in a leading group and and buy it on a discount? But so far, this gap has been protecting it. So I would watch this for some type of opportunity, either a break below to test a 50-day moving average, or you know, if it breaks above this uh, 105.76, perhaps they go after it like they've done some other stocks that have missed earnings. So. At this point, you know, pharma slash bios, you just have to know a little bit more about them than just their chart pattern because they're always privy or prone to some type of news release based on right. what they're working on in the pipeline. Right. Gotcha. All right. Well, that is all the time we have for questions today. What are your thoughts heading into the last trading session of the week? What is my thoughts? My thoughts is I wish today was Friday, not <laughs> Thursday, but it's not. Um, really, I, I just want everyone to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Ready? Got it. Okay. And just continue to, to make you know, movement slash strides. Everyone that's been looking for a top, you know, you, you know you haven't been doing the right thing. You haven't been listening to the market. You haven't been rotating. You haven't been sticking with the trend. So you're probably losing a little bit. If you're like me, trying to find eight, nine, 10 really good trades and you know, from the long side to stick with the trend and some of them aren't working and some are and it's a little frustrating, at least you're trying to do it. And if you're trying to hedge to be prudent and it takes money away from you, that's probably what's been going on on a lot of people's desks. Trying to stick with winning stocks, adding size to them when the chart pattern tells you, taking some off or you know, having some longs that when the market goes, your stock doesn't go, you're like, I'm trying to be long and I can't make money, what's going on here? And then also every pull-in, you add to your spider short or something and all of a sudden it doesn't close in the lows, it takes money away. So there, there isn't, you know, everyone right now isn't writing letters home to mommy and daddy and saying, you know, I'm killing it. But people are making progress. And with that progress comes a lot of work. It doesn't come easy. And the performance anxiety of new highs and every month or every week making new highs has been playing a toll on you know, hedge fund managers. You see it at the Salt Conference. A lot of them, they're like, oh, fallen leaders, fallen from grace. Even though they're billionaires, they, they care about their ego too. So everyone's got an ego and everyone cares about you know, how they're doing based on what the market's doing. Okay, all you can do is do what makes you feel comfortable and what's in your sphere of, of um, just say, of risk. So with that said, don't just look for a top. Don't try and play catch up. Don't do things that can get you in trouble. Just do things that could have you make progress within your process. And you know, depending where you are in that, whatever age it is, it, it's always a work in progress. I know guys who are in their 60s and 70s and every day they're learning. I know people who are one, two years out of college that you know, that are, have their eyes wide open as if they're going to be a millionaire tomorrow. And then you have guys like me that are old dog, that's an old dog that's trying to learn a new trick. There you go. Oh, that's what life is. Life is a work in progress, right? In, in everything. And you have to right. have that balance. And, you know, if, if balance isn't there, you're not going to be able to perform. So do what makes you happy and just don't judge your being based on whether you have a red or, or a green day in the market because you can have a lot of days in the market in order to run an Ironman, you have to, you know, have a process. <laughs> Not everyone runs an Ironman. Not everybody runs an Ironman, but the advice still applies. Right. Something like that. <laughs> All right. Well, meet us right back here next week for another Stock Twits Q&A session. Have a great night. I'm Mark Sperling, Director of Trading with T3 Trading Group and contributor to T3 Live. Do you trade on your own, but you wish you enjoyed the benefits of a large trading floor? With the T3 Live virtual trading floor, we deliver that experience to you on your computer. On the VTF, you can follow the long and short positions of experienced professional traders like myself, Scott Redler, and others, and listen to our live radio stations as we navigate the markets. In addition, you get the added value of a large community of sophisticated and like-minded traders. Your membership to the virtual trading floor also includes access to our two very popular newsletter products, Off the Charts and the Price Point Sheet at no additional cost. In my opinion, joining the room will be the best trading decision you will ever make. I would like to invite you to begin your membership with a seven-day free trial. To get started, visit t3live.com and click on the Virtual Trading Floor tab.
Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the VTF.